Outwintering replacement heifers or dry cows on forages such as fodder beet, kale or deferred grazing can significantly reduce the cost of rearing. However, to ensure optimal animal performance and health on these forages, it is important to understand the unique aspects of their mineral nutrition. The minerals present in an animal's diet play a vital role in aspects such as bone growth, metabolism, intake and health and fertility. It is therefore vitally important that we supply the correct amount of minerals and supplying too much or too little can have a major impact on these functions. An animal's requirements for minerals will vary depending on its age, growth rate, pregnancy and milk performance. It is therefore important to review the animal's requirements for minerals and how the diet can impact on these. When outwintering animals, intake of minerals will be dictated by the concentration of the minerals in the forages, aspects such as soil contamination and, in the case of root crops, the ratio of the leaf to the stem material. To give the best indication of the level of minerals in a particular forage, it is important to get it analysed in a commercial laboratory. This will indicate where there are deficiencies or excesses or where interactions with other minerals may be playing a role and therefore where the level of supplementation may be required. When we consider the mineral concentration in outwintered forages such as kale, deferred grazing or in this instance fodder beet, we can see that they are broadly similar to the animal's requirements. The presence of anti-nutritional factors, however, can often reduce the absorption of the mineral or indeed impact on its metabolism once it gets into the animal's body. Goitrogens, for example, are anti-nutritional factors that are found in brassicas such as kale and rape. These goitrogens can affect both the absorption and the functionality of iodine in the body. This is important because iodine plays a key role in the production of thyroid hormones within the animal's body. In fact, approximately 80% of the iodine found within the animal is present within the thyroid glands. Thyroid hormones are important for efficient energy metabolism and reproduction. In extreme circumstances, deficiency of iodine can therefore demonstrate itself in terms of poor performance and poor reproduction. In addition to this, selenium also plays a key role in the activation of the thyroid hormones and therefore a selenium deficiency can often demonstrate itself in symptoms similar to that of an iodine deficiency. One of the best ways to address the anti-nutritional factors present in brassicas such as kale and rape is to limit the intake to approximately 70% of the total daily dry matter. This can be achieved by offering alternatives such as big bale silage, deferred grazing or concentrates to meet the target daily live weight gain. In many situations, the provision of an iodine supplement may also be required. Brassicas also contain a compound called S-methylcysteine sulfoxide, or SMCO for short. Within the rumen, SMCO gets converted to dimethyl disulfide and, upon absorption, can interact with red blood cells and destroy them. And in extreme conditions, this can result in a situation similar to that seen in red water disease. Again, the major way to limit this condition is to minimise the intake of the brassica within the diet to approximately 70% by the inclusion of alternative forages such as big bale silage or concentrates to meet the target daily live weight gain. Animals grazing brassicas may also demonstrate symptoms similar to that associated with copper deficiency. However, similar to iodine, this is seldom due to a deficiency of copper within the forage and more often associated with the effects of antagonists. Brassicas such as kale are particularly high in sulphur, which, in association with the intake of soil, which can contain molybdenum, can reduce the absorption of copper to the animal. Sulphur and molybdenum form thiomolybdates within the rumen, and this can reduce absorption. The main means of reducing this, similar to iodine, is to supplement either in the form of free access minerals or to provide boluses, but it is important to avoid overfeeding copper as this can also be significantly detrimental to animal health. When outwintering dry cows on brassicas, it is important to consider that the leaf material can be particularly high in calcium at approximately 40 grams per kilogram dry matter. 
As a consequence, grazing brassicas may not be the best option for close-up dry cows. Although the diet can be balanced somewhat by the inclusion of low calcium forages such as big bale silage or straw. Grazing fodder beet also presents its own nutritional challenges. The chemical composition of leaves in fodder beet is significantly different to that of the roots. In root crops such as fodder beet, the content of sugars is particularly high whilst the content of fibre is particularly low. And in many ways, the chemical composition of fodder beet is more similar to that of cereals than it is to many forages. As a result, overconsumption of fodder beet can, in certain circumstances, result in scouring. The main means to avoid this is to ensure that the intake of the supplementary forage, such as big bale silage, contributes at least one third of the total dry matter intake. In addition to this, fodder beet leaves can be high in oxalates, which combined with calcium, reducing its availability to the animal. As a consequence, some animals may demonstrate symptoms similar to that of milk fever. There is evidence to suggest that animals can adapt to high levels of oxalates. But nevertheless, as with any dietary change, the introduction of fodder beet or brassicas should be done gradually over several days to avoid the potential of digestive upsets. For more information on balancing mineral nutrition for outwintered animals, visit the AHDB Dairy website.